Hey, my name's Alex Hollingsworth. I'm a producer, mixer, and sound designer based here at Octagon Studios in South London. And I'm here with Reason Studios to show you five ways that you can create amazing sound effects in the Reason Rap plugin. So let's go. Okay, so tip number one is using BVX vocoder, Polar, and Neptune to transform human sounds into big creature sounds. We're gonna start off with this recording of me. It sounds completely ridiculous, but it's good for demonstration purposes. So here it is. Okay, so the first steps that we went to achieve this sound was bringing it in to mimic and pitching it down. That immediately gave it a little bit more width, a little bit more depth, a little bit more texture to aid going into a bigger creature sound. And I also use this the granular stretch mode that we can see here, slightly increasing the length and the overlap, keeping the jitter up at 100% and bringing the spread a little bit down to 50%. This immediately changed the sound up. It obviously brought it down in pitch, but it also increased it in its weight as well. So as you can hear, it's already pitched it down, it's already giving it a little bit more weight. It's not there yet, but it's it, it's a good starting point. So bringing it in to Mimic was the first step. The second was bringing it into Polar Pitch Shifter and Neptune. Now these two are doing quite subtle effects here. The Neptune in particular is bringing down the formant and I'm also riding the pitch signal as well, which you can see when I play it. This is because I didn't want any pre and post ringing to it, I just wanted it to give a little bit more realism and a little bit more otherworldliness as well, which you can hear in the sound. So immediately that gives a little bit more like otherworldliness and we're taking it away from this human feeling now into an actual creature, like a big sounding creature. And like I said, I've dropped the formants and rode the pitch signal just for a little bit more realism to the sound. Now where all the heavy lifting is being done is on this BVX vocoder here. So I'm just gonna play it. As you can hear, that immediately gives it a lot more width, a lot more depth, a lot more texture, a lot more scariness, basically. And that is come about of this Robotron preset here, which you can see it's using the vintage mode. I brought down the formants for a little bit more depth, like I did on the Neptune. And I also utilized this Unison feature as well, which really increased the spread and the detune functions to make it sound just like a bit nastier, like a bit more intense, a bit more aggressive. And I also, as you can see, I automated the modulator and the carrier signal. So that's already starting to sound like an actual big creature sound, isn't it? So that's where most of the heavy lifting was done on that Robotron preset on the BVX vocoder. But then I did some extra work on the processing. I've just slightly reduced the low frequencies using this Reason Classic channel EQ just because I thought they were a little bit intense. And slightly increased the high mids as well and I've slightly compressed it as well just to control that dynamic. Only subtle and then I added a reverb to give it some space. Okay, so tip number two is utilizing Mimic to completely transform sounds to create movement and depth. Now, I wanted to use this example of a recording that I have of a tire gun, which I, I recorded a few years ago. And I wanted to see if I can transform this using the Reason Rack into a car engine sound. So the first step was running it through through Polar Dual Pitch Shifter and I shifted it down two octaves with quite a high feedback setting which, which sounded like this. So nothing too much, it just literally pitched it down and increased the feedback a little bit. I also used a low pass filter to, to slightly roll off the highs as it was quite intense. I then used Sweeper but on the flanger module with a really high feedback setting and a lower frequency, so it sounded like this. So I completely transformed it with that. I then used the RV7000 reverb to just give it a little bit of space. And then I finished up with the quartet chorus ensemble on the grain mode, which sounds like this. 
I bought it in to Mimic. I'm going to very quickly bypass Scream and pitched it down a little bit. And then I utilized the pitch bend wheel and the modulation wheel to, to start it off at a, at a lower pitch and slowly increase as the car is driving away. So this at first sounds like this. So it immediately sounds like it's, it's shifting gears, it's going up, it's slowly driving away, right? So what I did first was just a classic pitch bend going down to, to slightly higher, but I also utilized this sine fold in built effect in Mimic Sampler, which increased its drive a little bit, increased its in intensity, which is what I needed. So that sounds like this. This modulation wheel effect is working alongside the pitch bend, so it starts off at a lower volume and a lower pitch, and as it increases in pitch, it also increases in volume. So as you can see. And I've also slightly modulated the pan as well with the mod wheel, so it sounds almost like a little bit of a pass by. I then added Scream for a lot more intensity because I'm thinking of an action scene here. I'm thinking of a drive away or, or like an escape, which sounds like this. Which sounds immediately a lot more intense, a lot more aggressive, which is exactly what I wanted. So that is the main part of Mimic, how I used it to transform the sound. I pitched it down using the pitch bend, increase the gain of the envelope using the modulation wheel and slightly modulating a few parameters using this LFO. I then added another version of the Reason Rack to add an RV7000 reverb, which gave it a bit of space if you're inside or something like that. Okay, so tip number three is using echo and synchronous to create very effective tails and modulations for sci-fi and futuristic sound effects. So let's just start, start from the top. I had a very basic synthesized sound using Maelstrom and Europa. Maelstrom, I, was, I just had a basic sine wave and Europa, I had the game wavetable that you can see here using two modifiers, one for the fold function and another for the faded sync. That's very simple, sounds like this. So the next step is going to use echo. Now, what I did here was I had a very, very high feedback setting and a very short delay time. This created a ringing effect after the sound started. You would hear fluttery ringing sounds, which is exactly what I wanted because all of a sudden we're kind of introducing to this sci-fi futuristic sort of realm. Now the next part was using this modulation function here, using this LFO, slowly increasing the amount and also using this envelope and wobble function as well, just to create a bit more otherworldliness. So that's how this sounds with just the echo on it. with a little bit of pitch modulation at the end. So you could hear that ringing effect there, can't you? So already it's gone from a basic synthesized sound into a kind of like like a, f a fluttering kind of modulation-y weird futuristic sound, which is exactly what we wanted. The next step was with the Polar Pitch Shifter. And again, I used Pitch Shifter 2 very heavily here with a very high feedback setting. This gave the flutter, the high end energy in the sound and it sounds like this. As you can hear, there's a bit of a high-end sort of flutter in there, and when it becomes really apparent is when I start automating things. So what I did on this one was I created a combinator patch, which you can see here, and in the editor function in the combinator, I created three dials here, pitch and level, feedback and time. Pitch and level is going to the pitch bend of each of the synthesizers, so Maelstrom and Europa. I have a feedback function, which is just going straight to the feedback, part of the echo, and I've got a time function which is going to the time part of the echo as well. And what I've done is I've automated both the time and the feedback in Logic here. So that sounds like this. That's all created through creating a combinator patch and automating those combinator dials. So I have a two synth sounds, I had the crazy settings on the echo and the Polar dual pitch shifter, and I automated all of the pitch 
on not only the synthesizers, but I also automated it on the pitch shifter as well. And as a result, you can hear the shift. You can hear the shift in pitch and also the shift in movement as well, which is very, very important for this particular type of sound. But the last part of it is using synchronous. Now, synchronous is very, very good for rhythmical effects in a musical sense, but we can also use it as a very effective modulation tool for sound design. And what I've done here with my combinator patch, I've essentially run that, if you flip the rack around by pressing Y, I've put the output of my combinator patch into a spider audio splitter. I've gone one audio splitter out into this line mixer, and the, the other one I'm sending all the way down to synchronous, which you can see here, and then out of synchronous, into number two in this line mixer. So what that's got now is it's got the fluttering modulation from synchronous and I can dial it in using this line mixer here. And this is how that sounds. Okay, so tip number four is using Sweeper for futuristic sound effects. So I started off with this recording that I made a few years ago from my friend who's got this kind of blank like air rifle, it sounds super, super loud. And it was recorded inside an indoor swimming pool area and the really harsh reflections gave it an intensity which I quite liked. So, th so this is how that sounded. That already sounds quite aggressive, quite intense. So here is the after sound. Okay, so first things first, we already had the grit and the aggression from this from this first initial gun shot recording, but it needed a bit more low end to it. Like it needed a similar sound, but it just needed to be a bit more low end in pitch and have a bit more boom there. So I used an explosion sound just from a sample library and I layered it up in Mimic and played it down a little bit with this inbuilt noise here and it sounded like this. So you can hear that it's slightly lower in pitch and gives it a little bit more low end energy there. So next up I wanted a bit more high end sort of sprinkles alongside that. So what I did is I loaded up Thor, I used the modulation envelope to modulate the oscillator one pitch, which was just a standard sawtooth wave, quite rich in harmonics. But then I also used an FM pair oscillator and also a noise oscillator for some added texture as well. I then sent these through a comb filter and a state variable filter. And then I also ran it through sweeper on the filter section, very high resonance, and also through through echo using that effect I covered on the last tip, which was using those modulation tails, that ringing effect, which, which sounded cool. So this is how this sounded. And the final layer in the sound is basically a pitch envelope sine wave, that classic sci-fi gunshot sound. And that was created again, purely using Thor. Now, I also use the same thing as last time. I use the modulation envelope to modulate the oscillator one pitch again, just to give it that classic pew sound. And I used three oscillators again. I used an analog oscillator, a noise oscillator, and a multi oscillator for a super rich sound. Now this is going to a low pass ladder filter and a comb filter. The comb filter is again, they're giving it that, that slight craziness, that, that futuristic sort of vibe that we're going for. And I also used this inbuilt chorus here as well to also give that, that modulation effect. This sounded like this. So that all together without the bus processing sounds like this. Now where this sound really comes to life is through the bus processing. And I used a whole load of devices from the Reason Rack. So I used this UN16 Unison module firstly, just to slightly detune it using this detune function here, slightly dialing off on the dry and the wet because it was a little bit, bit too intense, but this is how this sounds. So it's very subtle. but you can hear the slight detuning effect there. I then use the echo again with this modulation function, which you can really hear through this modulation and the filter with a very, very high resonance and quite a high feedback as well. But again, like the last two tips, we've got that slight kind of like tail there, that ringing tail. I then sent it through quartet chorus ensemble again using the chorus function but slowly riding in the dry and wet knob because I wanted to have that initial transient and then all the weird modulation stuff comes in afterwards and then I utilize 
an equalizer because I felt like it needed a bit more depth after that high sprinkly stuff. Very subtle. Sort of in the low, low mid range. I then use sweeper, which is what I used to really emphasize this futuristic gunshot. And this is what this tip is all about, is utilizing this frequency knob to bring it down very quickly. As you can hear, it's got a very high feedback setting on the phaser module. It starts off, you know, midway through on the frequency. And as I'm doing it, I automate the gunshot sound down. So that's what gives it that life. It gives it that pew sort of sound alongside all of the other elements doing that, that really creates that futuristic sound. Okay, so tip number five is using Kong's effect section and Audiomatic Retro Transformer to create eerie atonal soundscapes. The first thing I did with the sound was literally just create a very basic synthesized bass drum that you can do here. If you, you open up Kong, show your drum and effects on the drum module, synth bass drum and that sound is very simple. It sounds like this. I slightly adjusted the bend amount to make it a little bit slower so it'll suit it better when creating an ambient sound. I then started messing around with the effects and then added this overdrive and resonator. Adjusting it to model B and really cranking up the resonance to give that eeriness already. I then added a ring modulator for some extra modulated weirdness, which sounds like this, a very low frequency. You can hear this. It comes in after the initial sound. You can hear that it comes in after the initial sound, which makes it quite interesting and continuous for kind of like a droning low lengthy sound or sustained sound. So I then added a tape echo on the bus effects. Then finally, I added a parametric EQ with the gain cranked all the way up on a very low frequency. And, and this is how it sounded. I then introduced Audiomatic Retro Transformer, which created a whole nother dimension. If you mess around with that transform dial, sounds really, really great. So that immediately created a lot more ambience, a lot more space, a lot more eeriness, and also made it a little bit more atonal. So I'd really urge you to experiment with all of these different types of modes here. It's really, really interesting. And then I used Beatmap. Now, Beatmap is normally used from a musical standpoint, right? But you can also use it for very interesting modulations for sound design as well. So what I'm doing is very, very light, but I'm just using the gate out of the kick and the snare going into the CV modulation for the transform and the dry wet knob. It's very, very subtle. You can hear it slightly. Slightly tweaking, which is which is really important from a continuity standpoint is that it it creates variation, it creates interest. I then yeah, introduce Neptune again. I shifted the formant right down to really bring out the dark side of the of the sound and increase the pitch signal just a little bit. Now I then added rotor, rotary speaker, which added an interesting dimension there. It's almost got like a machinery sort of flutter there to it. So use this sparingly, but I slightly dial back the dry wet knob. And if you want a bit more of a fluttering sound, you can It's really, really interesting. And if you want variation in your drones and ambience, for example, if you're in a horror video game or something like that, and you wanted to slightly vary it up, then using automation on this dry wet knob would be absolutely perfect. And then I, I fed it into a reverb as well, a digital reverb on the hall setting, slightly dialed back the dry wet knob with a really large size. And this is how it sounded.
So there were five tips to creating amazing sound effects using the Reason Rack. I really hope you enjoyed it. It's such an incredible tool for sound design as well as music. And I would urge you to go and record a whole bunch of stuff, bring them into the Reason Rack, manipulate it, process it, flip the rack around, experiment with a whole load of modulation options and be inspired. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you soon. Cheers.